Hi there and welcome to yoga class. Today we are doing our heart chakra. Lots of chest opening and lots of feeling what's going on inside and feeling light and airy. We're going to start off with um, Nadi Shodhana which is a breathing technique. So using your thumb and your ring finger. You can rest your fingers on your forehead if you want. You're going to cover up your right nostril and breathe in through your left. Then cover up your left nostril, breathe out through your right and then breathe in again through your right as well. Nice big deep breath. Then cover it up, breathe out through your left. Breathe in through your left, cover it up then breathe out through your right and breathe in again. So as long as after you cover it up you're breathing out, then in, then swapping sides. And do about 10 rounds of this. It might take a couple of goes to get used to it. But feel free to pause and replay. As long as you're covering up the nostril, breathing out the other one, then breathing in, and then doing the reverse on the other side. So about 10 to 20 rounds of that. This is really nice for just balancing up the body, levelling everything out. Great for focusing as well. You've got to have a little bit of concentration to do this one. But with nice, regular, deep breathing, it's going to slow your heart rate down as well. And really balancing for the mind and body. Well done. So we're now we're going to sit on our bottoms and just pop your hands on your shoulders. And we're going to inhale, turn to the left, then exhale, turn to the right. And do it, you know, don't hang about. We're not doing it really slow and controlled. I don't want you throwing yourself from side to side. But we're going to do this 12 times. Inhale into the left, exhale into the right. Okay, you can go as fast as you want because this is all about getting the torso all warmed up, getting your breathing in time with your movement as well getting your circulation going too. So we're going to do the same thing but start on the other side. You're going to twist to the right and inhale and exhale to the left. So the same thing only the other way round. Twisting, twisting, elbows in line with the shoulders, back and forward. Keep those seat bones on the floor as well just until you've done about 12. Really good for opening up and Balance in your heart chakra. Now we're going to come on to, our, well, I'm going to turn to the side to let you see, but we're going to clasp our hands behind our back and really lift that chest up. Ground your seat bones into the back, give your neck a wee wiggle, do whatever feels nice, but the chest goes up, not just out, up as well. And that might not look like a lot or feel like a lot, but as long as you're challenging yourself and put your hands back behind you, about hand length, and you can just lift your chest up, or you can take this into a back bend now, see what's available to you. Don't throw your head back though. Um, to see what it feels like and then we're going to do a seated cat cow now so we inhale and look up and exhale really round those shoulders round inhale chest up and out exhale shoulders back and up so just going in a nice rhythm like this back and forward back and forward just a few of get that torso warmed up the spine it's so good for the spine this one flexion and extension on the spine warming it up for our yoga practice so back to a nice neutral spine now and we're going to put our hands in the mat and come into a tabletop position from here we're going to come into um our puppy dog pose so just walking your hands forward try and keep your hips where they are and drop your chest towards the floor. Now you might have your head in a block, you might be on your forehead, or you might be on your chin. Again, it doesn't matter. It's all about opening up the chest. You'll feel this really in your shoulders as well. And you can make this more active if you want to by going up on your fingertips at the front. So it's entirely up to you. You might find that a little bit too much. I find I get a better stretch when, when I'm not up on my fingertips. So gently just walking back up now as well into tabletop. And let's do some cat cows again. So inhale, 
exhaling when your back goes up, inhaling when your chest goes to the floor, tummy goes to the floor, and exhaling. So a few of these in your own time, as long as they're not too rushed, as long as you're inhaling in the way up and exhaling in the way down. So we're going to come into a nice thread the needle pose after this, really nice for opening up the chest. So come back to a neutral spine and we're going to lift our left hand up to the ceiling, nice and tall, and post it between that right hand and the right leg. So just come down onto the side of your face. Uh, you can stretch that upper arm out top if you'd like to. Nice big deep breaths, keeping your hips over your knees. And let's Push up again, left hand back up, and then back down to our tabletop. And let's do the other side. So this time the right hand up first of all, post it down, side of the face comes onto the, the mat, and hips stay above your knees. And try and keep your hips square as well. Right hand back up and then let's come back down to our tabletop position. So you don't need to turn to the side but just coming up on your knees what we're going to do is we're going to put our right leg out and plant the foot as well so we're not on the side of our, our foot. Right hand onto your leg, left hand right up and lengthen and then come over into a side bend. So keep that left shoulder back, keep the body nice and straight and then come up to the other side and then what we're going to do is then fall gently down onto the other hand and really stretch that right arm above your head, bicep along your ear, lifting your torso up, and then nice and strong back up to the centre again. Let's do the other side. So this time the left leg comes out to the side, nice and square. Right hand comes up, inhale, exhale, come over to the side in a nice side bend. Really, really feeling the stretch there, should feel really nice. And then back to the middle and of course then coming down onto the right hand and send that left arm up really up alongside the ear. You can look up if you want to, you can look straight ahead as long as you're feeling the nice stretch. So coming back up to centre, we're going to come back down on our hands and knees now and have a couple of rounds of cat cow on our hands and knees, so inhaling with your stomach pressing down and exhaling as your back presses up to the ceiling. Just a few in your own time and then we're going to tuck those toes and sit back in our heels. So clasp your hands, press the back of your hands towards the floor and really lift your chest up. Okay, give your head a wee wiggle but chest up uh, more than out. So lifting up while well, we're getting a nice little foot stretch as well. Hands on the floor, lifting that bottom up and let's come up to downward dog. So hands shoulder width apart, feet hip width apart, pedaling it out. That's it. Bending the knees if you need to and keeping that back nice and straight. Little wiggle if you need to. And then from here, we are going to come forward. So by walking or stepping and we're going to have a lovely wee ragdoll pose. So feet are hip width apart knees are as bent as you like and just hanging from the waist hands on the floor and then we are going to straighten the back and straighten the legs so you can put your hands on your knees as well and have a nice wee forward fold really feeling the stretch you can always hold on to the back of your legs as well to just go a little bit deeper if you want to and slowly come up Taking your time, raise your hands up, palms together, look at your thumbs and coming back to a mountain pose. So feet together, shoulders relaxed and nice big deep breaths. So let's clasp our hands behind our back again, just like we did before, lifting up that chest. And then we are just going to bend our knees a little bit and fold forward, bringing the hands above the chest. 
So you can keep your knees fairly straight if you want, but bend into it as much as you, as you want to. The main point here is opening the shoulders up, remember. Feeling the nice stretch up the back of your legs as well. Hands onto the mat and let's step back to a plank. So you can put those knees down, remember. Roaring down to Chaturanga, up to Upward Dog or Cobra. Tuck in the toes and let's come back to a Downward Dog. So pressing that chest back towards the thighs. And then we're going to lift our left leg up and bend at the knee for a three-legged dog. Opening up the hip, straight the leg up again. And then look between your hands and bring that left foot forward. Now when I say between your hands, as far as it will go, back knee down on the mat. Tuck or untuck the toes and lift your hands up into a crescent lunge, dropping those hips. Watch that front knee as well, we don't want it in front of the toes. And then let's bring our elbows down and back into an angel arm pose. Open the chest up, you don't have to do the back bend. But as long as your elbows are down and back, that will still be opening up your chest anyway. So hands either side of your front foot, tuck that back foot, straighten the leg, and then let's plant the back foot on the ground. Move it forward if you need to. We're going to come up to a warrior one. So same, that front knee hasn't moved at all. Hands together, you can be looking up at your thumbs or straight ahead, and you can come into that a little bit back bend as well if you want to. Nice strong legs, then feet either side of the hand again, let's step back to plank. Have a vinyasa, let's come up to upward dog or cobra, tuck the toes back to downward dog and let's do the same on the other side. So right foot this time, just lifting it as much as you can, bending the knee, pointing the toe, opening that hip up, that should feel quite nice. Straighten the leg out again, step it between the hands at the front. So the back knee comes down first of all, remember. And we come up into our lovely crescent lunge and try and soften into that crescent lunge. Really feel the stretch between your legs. Then angel arms. So again, you can come into more of a back bend or just simply keep your back straight and move your elbows back and down. That's it. Hands either side of the front foot, tuck the back foot, straighten the leg and then we are going to plant that back foot to come up to warrior one eh, on this side. So coming up, front knee doesn't really move remember, reaching up your fingertips nice and high. Let's come back down with the hands again, step back to plank and lower down. Pausing in chaturanga if you want to, upward dog or cobra and then tucking your toes up in to downward dog. So just coming back up onto your knees, we're going to come down into a sphinx pose. So top of the feet on the floor, pelvis on the floor, elbows on the floor. And remember you can scoot those elbows forward a little bit if the compression in your back is just a little bit too much for you. Or in the same token, you can put your hands outwards and forward into seal pose to make it a little bit more for you. Relax those shoulders out, really try and open it up your chest and stretch in the front of your body. Then from there, if you want to, you can come into crocodile pose by keeping those elbows on the floor and just resting your face in your hands. So then just rest your head on your hands there just for a wee second or two. And then we're gonna do some baby cobras. So that means taking your head, your chest and your hands off the floor, inhaling on the way up and exhaling on the way down. Last one, this is the yaw of them. So from here, let's take our hands back, palms down. And you can keep your hands on the floor while you lift your feet up into a locust variation, okay? Lifting your chest and your feet off the floor. And you can involve those hands if you want as well. So inhaling, bringing them up, chest up, feet up, hands up. 
pausing there just for a couple of breaths and coming back down. So let's come into that child's pose again because it's a really nice counter pose for just all those back bends that we've just done. Just try and really relax into it. So coming up <clears throat> from the child's pose, keep your toes tucked and sit back in your heels. Get that lovely nice foot stretch in again. Hands up, reaching up to the ceiling and let's bring those angel arms in again. So elbows back in line with your shoulders, but back. And you can come into more of a back bend like before. Remembering that chest is up toward the ceiling. So, coming into camel pose now, let's put our hands on our sacrum and keep those hips pointing forward. So lift the chest up just like we'd be doing the, the whole time. Lift it up to the ceiling. Keep those hips forward. Don't just drop the head back. Gently let it come back. Now, if you want to, you can do that again or do the full camel variation. So tuck the toes at the back and just, if you can reach the toes, put your hand down and then put the other one down and coming into full camel pose. But be really careful while you're doing this one. Slowly coming back up. Then come down just for a couple of breaths or two in child's pose. It's a perfect counter pose for the deep back bend. So let's come on to our bottom now with our feet out in front of us, coming into Dandasana, staff pose. Feet pointing up, legs together, nice straight back, relaxed shoulders, just looking beyond your feet. Now let's take our peace fingers here and let's hold on to our big toes. So bend your knees if you need to. And then from here, keep the back straight and just inch your heels down. Okay, you might come to straight legs, you might not. But really pull against those toes. And remember and just keep that back nice and straight so your, your knees might still be very bent that's absolutely fine so from there slowly walking your hands back up give your legs a wee shugle shake to loosen them off and now we're going to do a really nice passive version of this so relax your legs now up top of your hands on the floor and let your head curl over so your spine's doing a nice curl over to the front. Just relax in there, breathing nice and deeply. And slowly coming back up again. So, we're going to come into um, a nice reverse tabletop so the feet are on the floor, hands on the floor and we're just pushing that pelvis up as far as it will go you might just get your bottom a little bit off the ground and the other variation of this as well is to have your legs straight, your toes pointed hands in the same place and lift up into Parotanasana so maybe a little bit more challenging you can still do the reverse tabletop again for that one so let's lie down now on our elbows, not right down, we're going to do a little fish pose. Point those toes again and lift the chest up to the ceiling again. And if you want to, <clears throat> you can make it even deeper. What you can do is just lift the chest a little bit more and you can also bring the crown of your head to the floor. So make sure it's your crown of your head, not the back of the head. Okay, just coming down as much as you can. So bring those knees into the chest, stretching it off, and then let's roll up again. And we're going to do a gomukhasana pose, so the right knee is going to point towards the front of the mat, and then you're going to cross that left leg over, okay? It might just cross over a little bit, or you might be able to stack the knees. It's up to you. 
Just do what's available to you. Holding on to your feet. Nice straight back and open the chest. So bringing those hands up again. But let's do some angel arms. So opening the chest while you're in that position. Bending your back only as much as is comfortable. Hands back up again and then exhale, bring them back down again. So we are going to do the other side. So you can do a little twizzle like this and walk around the back. <laughs> so your other knees in front or you can just simply change sides. So uh, left knee to the front this time and then change it over. So remember that top leg doesn't need to come right over. Uh, it's just going to come over as far as it comes. Um, and just sit there nice straight back to begin with. And then bringing your hands up on an inhale and bringing your angel arms down again, opening that chest up. Hands back up on the inhale and coming back down. So let's unwrap our legs now. Maybe do a little couple of windscreen wipers. Loosen off a little bit and then if you have a strap you can use it at this point, you may not need it or you can use something instead of a strap. We're going to do a nice chest opener with our arms. So our right hand comes up and the right hand comes between our shoulder blades So and then the left hand comes right around the back. Now you might be able to bind your hands like this or you might want to hold on to strap or you can just simply reach for them as long as you are opening the tricep and opening that shoulder that is what we're trying to to do here so let's do the other side left hand up in the air place it between your shoulder blades the other hand comes round and and you might find you might bind on one side and not on the other just do what you can use the strap or just simply reach but great for opening the shoulders and stretching the triceps so let's come down onto our back now get yourself nice and comfortable feet on the floor we're going to inhale and we're going to exhale coming up to a bridge pose. So really relax the shoulders, really lifting the pelvis up, opening the front of your body and coming back down again. One more. Keeping your breathing going whilst you're up there and then coming back down again. So put the soles of your feet together now and your knees out to the side. Let's do a recline butterfly pose. And pop your hands up and your arms in that sort of angel position up above your head. With your arms on the floor like this, it can be really nice and opening for the chest while you're on the floor here. Just pausing here just for a little moment or two, feeling your breathing. Bringing those knees back up and let's come into a shavasana. Feel free to put some socks or a hoodie or anything like that on. Feel your body settling into the mat or a nice shavasana. Legs out to the side, feet relaxing, top of the hands on the floor. So for the next few minutes, just reaping the benefits of everything you've just done. Feeling your body getting heavier and heavier with every single breath and just relaxing for the next few minutes.
So just starting to deepen your breath, let your awareness come back into the room. Start to maybe wriggle your toes, bend your knees. Whatever you do though, just getting up nice and slow, rolling onto your side first. Pausing there for a second and then nice and gently coming to sit up. So just sitting there with your hands at your heart, just shutting your eyes for a little minute, just getting your whereabouts back. We're going to finish with a namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for your heart chakra flow today. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to the channel, remember, so you get all the new classes that are coming out and we'll see you again soon.